Hola, comadres. Welcome to the 10th episode of Comadreando. I'm your host, Marcy. This is our mid-season finale before we go on our baby hiatus for the holiday season. You guys get to enjoy time with your family. You know, it's very important to me. And what better way to go on break than to bring on my following guest? Our special guest today is Nemo, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Who are you? Ew, I'm Nemo or whatever. It's not Cardi, but just Nemo. The curl plug on Instagram. Follow me. Six line dulce when I'm baking. What's up with the what's up? Thank you, Marcy, for having me. Um, I'm a comedian. I'm a sister. Uh, unfortunately, an employee <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> but we here. We're here. Yeah. Hey, followers, hey, followers listeners, listeners, people. <laughs> so I know Nemo because we're actually both part of the same social club. We're part of the Mami Chulas. And we were also uh, actors in the Vagina Monologues. And my friend Nemo was one of the Angry Vaginas. So uh, we grew closer together. I mean, I had been following her on Instagram for a long time until we met in person. Then I was like, ah! (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, and we've been obsessed with each other ever since. Um, So today's topic is siblings of people with special needs. Um, And it's one I've been curious about because you know my son doesn't have any siblings um, that he actually lives with. And... I think about actually often what it would have been like for him to have a sibling that was typically developing and would be able to model things for him. So um, I decided to bring Nemo on um, to discuss that topic and we're going to get started. So what rank are you with respect to order of children? Like, are you the older sister, the younger sister? I'm the younger younger sister. sister. Oh, you my are. sister. My sister's, my sister's older, older than, than me. me. She's thirty three. I'm thirty. Oh, okay. So three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And um, tell me about your sister. What well, What's her diagnosis? So, so she's she's, um, um, she's, mentally, she's mentally impaired. impaired. Um, she's laying right across my living room, so I get to look at her um for inspiration. Um, she's mentally impaired, and um, in other words. I don't like using the word mental retardation, but um, mentally impaired and suffers from epilepsy. And um, pretty much it's like living with a seven-year-old forever, but that's quirky and that has a sense of humor and has been through a lot. And um, yeah, you know... I'm really, I'm really passionate, passionate about, about this particular, particular topic. topic. Um, um, I, appreciate I appreciate anybody, anybody that, that like, like ever asks me, asks me, "Hey, how's your sister?" sister? I'm like, "Oh my god, thank you." You know, you know that, that, that she exists because she, exists, cause she cause does, she does. And, she's and she's a very, a very huge, huge part, part of my life. life. She's, she's a huge, a huge um, part, part of, of how I develop, like, like the person I am today. So and what developed the character, Nemo, you know, and the inspiration behind a lot of things. That, that I, do. I do, and the and reason, the reason why, why I go, go so hard, hard the way, the way I, do. I do, she's, she's the, inspiration the inspiration behind all of that. So she's so lucky to have you. I'm, I'm lucky, lucky to have, to have her, her. Believe it or not, not. Yeah. I'm, I'm very, very lucky, lucky to have, to have her. her. Um, um, having, having people, people with, with disabilities, disabilities in your life, life makes, makes a huge, huge difference. difference. And don't get me wrong, we've you know people naturally have egotistical thoughts, and unconsciously, you know, the why me thoughts, the damn, I wish things were better thoughts. Damn, I wish it wasn't her thoughts. But you learn from that and you grow from that and you gain strength from that and all you could do is move forward, you know, and learn how to adapt and learn how to apply it for the better. I really love that, Nemo. It's, I kind of touched on that a little bit in the the last episode that I recorded. (laughs) I discussed, uh, you know, we're up, right? We're we're up, we're on it, we're doing the things, we're taking care of the people that we love and, uh, you know, we're there for them. But then we do, we are human. And yes. we have those moments that are just kind of like, wow, man, why me? Like, why did it have to be me? And I shared in the last episode that I recorded was 
God wouldn't give you this if they if if they didn't know that you would be able to handle it and that you would be able to provide that mm-hmm. support for your sibling, you know, or or your child. You know what I'm saying? So it's it, it it's just kind of like being that for your sister, because it's kind of like I wanna I wanna say that you became the older sister. Is I did, I, I did. Am I yeah. You're, You're absolutely, absolutely correct. correct. Um, so, so being, being from, from like, like I don't, I don't even, even know, know how you call, call it. it. Mom, Mom is from, is from DR. DR. She's, She's full blown, blown Dominican, Dominican. Migrated, migrated to the United, United States, States for a better life. life. And, and um, you know, you know unfortunately, unfortunately, my sister. My sister so, so the way, the way my, sister's my sister's condition, condition started, started um, she, caught she caught meningitis, meningitis when, she when she was a year and a half years old, and that's what kind of rolled out the you know know, the the impairment of epilepsy epilepsy, like like so many things things came came after that 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 affected her her. my sister sister was was born a perfectly perfectly normal baby baby. and then then at at one and a half half, that that happened happened. she was in a coma coma for nine months months. they They told my mom she was gonna be a vegetable and today on today's day 2021 she dances she walks she talks she is anything but a vegetable she yeah, eats a vegetables, vegetables. <laughs> if she, she needs, needs to. to. <laughs> she'll, 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 she's, she's bilingual. bilingual. Like, like, if you if speak English, English to her, she'll speak Spanish to you. If you speak Spanish to her, she'll speak English to you. She'll, she'll mind fuck, fuck you, too. too. Excuse my language for the viewers or listeners. But she'll do that, too. Like, And I'm like, what you, why? You know how to speak English. She's like, yeah, I know. And I'm like, what? But from a young age, imagine being six, seven years old. Having, having being, being fluent, fluent in, in Spanish, Spanish and, and learning, learning English in school because Spanish was my first language because I learned it at home and then going to Head Start, I, that's when you know I started speaking English because I was in school. My sister was barely speaking, so I was doing more, more most of the talking. And um, but my mom made it her business, like you know she she bought us alphabet. She did all she did everything she had to do to prepare us. And, you know, at least prepare me. And then being seven, going to going to a freaking doctor's appointment, explaining what happened to my sister on behalf of my mom, Mom. going to the SSI to explain what's up with my sister sister on behalf behalf of my mom. mom. Like, Like, you know, know, and and I was was forced forced to be this. Okay, you know, and by the time I was nine. You know, I was cursing people out in case they had something to say to my mother. Like, like, so it's, 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 it, it got it to got that, to that point, point as well. As well. Like, like, you know, I had to be a little sophisticated. Like, 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 you know, yes, sir, sir, you know, Nancy, Nancy this, uh, 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 uh. Oh, oh, she needs she to learn English. English. Well, you well, need you to shut up. How about that? Yeah, you caught the right one. I'm sure I'm little and all that, but I would jump up and punch you in your face. What's up? So I've been, I've been, I've been that person. The problem, the problem solver, solver. Yeah. Of, of the, the, of the of crew. The crew. Um, um, and yeah, that's been my life. That's, that's been my life, life protecting, protecting them, them and making, making sure they're sure good. good. Wow. Um, I, so much of your story resonates with me because like, I had to be the cultural broker and I was actually the older sister. Mm-hmm. But, you know, doing all of that, I like you just gave me flashbacks and and I didn't have you know a a sibling with special needs so I can imagine that added layer of complexity to your situation when when you were younger and you know having to be in that position like do you how did that affect you like like your actual childhood were you allowed to be a kid I was, I was allowed, allowed to, be to be a kid. kid. I, played I played with my sister, sister all the time. All the time. Okay. And my and mom my would mom dress, dress us up in like by little my... cute outfits. And we, me and my sister would always sit here and play. She bought us both. So one thing I appreciated about my mom, she never treated one more or less than neither one of us. Both were equally accountable for our actions, for our what we said, what we thought. Like everything was equal in this household. So that I appreciated because I learned to appreciate my sister. And whenever my like, God forbid, my sister dropped something or something, like we we both spoke in the third person. So I call I got that from her because my sister would be like, Isa did that. 
Oh, and and sometimes, sometimes my mom would get like upset because you know Dominicans are just some bocone. Hey, oh, I'm a and I'm like, yeah, no, Jenny did it. Jenny, Jenny did, did it. it. I, did I did it. it. So, so, by the way, guys, my name is Jennifer. Don't ever call me that because I won't acknowledge you. Call me Nemo. Thanks. Back to the story. Anyway, um, <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> but but, um, but yeah, yeah, it was, it was like, like that. that. Like I, I, you know, we we had a normal childhood. We had toys. My mom would like, you know, my mom did everything for us as far as you know, make sure that we were happy, make sure that we were you know educationally learning. And I would teach my sister stuff, and it was just you know, I would go to school conferences with my mom, but it was never. I never. And you know that's a great question because I've never been asked that. And now that I I thinking about it, like I never felt how can I say I never felt like burdened or with that, that task, task with with, with, with being, being like, like okay, okay I, really I really am, am the am younger sister, but I have to act like the older sister and like I know what the hell I'm talking about half of the time, and I have to take responsibility for this, and I have to always watch over her, and I have to protect her, and I have to do this, and I have to do that. But I never took it as a task as um. Like, oh, this is a job or this is what I, you know, understand what I'm saying? Like, I was never forced to do anything, you know, but instead I just saw, okay, it's only me, my mom and my sister. If my mom is doing something, let me help my mom with my sister. You know, it was like that. And we would keep each other occupied. And the thing is that me and my sister, we actually have a very, very, very loving relationship. relationship. So, so it's, it's, it's you guys together. Yeah, yeah like yeah, we're, she's, she's very, very loving. loving. Like she'll give me kisses on the cheek. She gives me hugs. And, you know, she tells me how much she loves me. I'll tell her how much I love her. Then we'll joke around. Then she asks me if she looks pretty today. Like she's conceited too. too. Like, like, and that, that, that's, that's the thing. thing. Like, like, you know, you know, like it was never, it was never bad having that you know at times you know I would get frustrated whenever she would get sick whenever her health was you know being affected but other than that like having like having her here was never like oh it was never that it was never that you're such a good sister thank Thank you you. (laughs) wait so since you say you're so fister ratchet yeah I ask you a question Okay. okay. Did you ever go fisty cuffs with somebody? Cause oh, I sure did. Yep. Yep. No, no Kane looked, looked at her. At her. Wait, you gotta tell me the whole story. You can't just tell me. Like, like look at no, I had various altercations with certain people. I could give you a few stories if you need me to. Like, yeah, like, like I've, I've, I've had, had, I've had times like until this day. Like, if I'm walking down the street with her, and somebody staring at her a little too long. Um, excuse me, you know her. You owe her some money. What's up with the? Get out her face. You know, but growing up, it was more so like they would try to make fun of her. And like my sister couldn't be left alone for too long. So sometimes I'll probably be going to my mom real quick. She's like in the jungle gym. And I'm like, okay, I'll be right back. And then I'll go get some water or something. And I see kids surrounding her. And I'll go up there. I'll run. And I'm like, all right, what's the problem? Like, I'll get in front of her. Like, what's the problem? And my sister tell me, oh, she called me this, this one, this. And I bing, bam, boom, And I'll just start fighting with everybody. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah like there like, was there this was one time. time these, these... It was like three little girls. They try to jump me, and I and I fucked wow. them up. How old are you when that happened? I was like, I was like ten. I was like ten. Around, around that, that age. age, I was like, I was like around 10. ten. Yeah, I was, yeah, like, I was 10. like ten. And, and I, just, I just, I just grabbed, grabbed them, them one by one, one and, then and then one was trying to like pull my hand. And when I saw one got weak, I grabbed the one from the back. Like, like. <laughs> like when, like it, when comes it comes to my, to my sister, sister I'm, 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 I'm yeah, like I see, like red, red, I see I see red, I see red, and that's, and that's it. it. I turn, I turn into, into a bull. bull. I'm, I'm a Pisces, Pisces and I turn into a whole Taurus. Like what's, like, what's up with the water? Water? Like, like I turn, I turn into, into a bull. bull. I see you're, you're red. You're about that life. Nah, I really when it comes to her. When it comes to my mom and my sister. But my sister, somebody that's indefensive, like she's not. My sister won't ever. My sister has manners. My sister says, "Please, thank you. You're welcome." Oh my God, thank you so much for coming. Like, my sister has manners. Like, things that normal, like, people that have no disability don't have. My sister sister has common common sense. sense. You know, like, there's certain things that she's like, like, she'll even tell her home health aides, like, um, don't touch that. That's my sister's. Wow. You understand understand what I'm I'm saying? saying? So it's it's just, you're trying to harm something. So she's she's harmless. You know? So it's like, like, no, are you crazy? crazy? And it really, like, 
uh, yanks my chain. Like when people are just mean to right, people right. with special needs. Like so, uh, uh, there was this um. So you know we we're Dominican, and mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not not to shit on our, our mm-hmm. culture. But there's people that are really uneducated, especially when it comes to people with special needs. And absolutely, um, um, I remember Aiden was small, and people in my family were still like wrapping their head around. And I'm not talking about my nuclear family, like you know, extended and extended family. Mm-hmm. And um, they were wrapping their head around Aiden's disability. And Aiden, um, his thing is that he doesn't think about consequences. He'll act in the moment and he, it's not intentional. He's not trying to be aggressive or whatever it is. He's just, whatever, the sti- yeah, like whatever the stimuli is, he's trying to get it to stop. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that can look like, you know, like really hugging you really tightly to kind of get you to like, especially if you're crying, like if a kid is crying and screaming, he'll mm-hmm. hug them tightly, not because he wants to like, right, like, you know, right. Cry. No, no, I, I, get, I understand that, like, that. He's like trying to like, trying to protect them and like yeah. soothe them but it, it comes off as aggressive right so right. um or he doesn't know how to say it. i think you're pretty or i like you so he'll be like can i listen to your belly he'll be like can i listen to your belly or he'll say i want to pull her hair and i'm like listen this is not how you're gonna bag girls like <laughs> can't be coming over here pulling nobody's hair so he did this at a party and i like a family member of mine started talking a lot of stuff about him. So, you know, I went and I, I went in and like, it was like, a, it was a, it was a birthday party and he was in a jungle gym. So mm-hmm. I had to like climb up there and like get him down and, you know, talk to him. And like, he didn't really understand what was going on. I want to say he was like four years old. And then. And that's a, that's crucial, a crucial stage because they're, they're really, really in between, in between of, of getting, getting out, out of, of that, that like, like taller, taller stage, stage but they're, but they're still, still kind of stuck, stuck in it because, because of the disability. The disability. So it's kind of hard, hard to like, like kind of like, okay, okay come, come on, on. You're, becoming you're becoming a big, a big kid, now. kid now. Like, come like, on, like you should, should but it's but not that you should anything. With with people with disability, it's not you should anything. It's what you can. Do you do you understand this? Can you understand this? Can you understand where I'm coming from? Like. This, this family Ooh. was talking hella. Please, please tell me you smacked smack that something. something. Please tell I me. I did like, because like, I'm not. I'm not a physical can I, I, person. Can I? <laughs> like you need me to? Because Titi Nemo will come, will come in real quick. The person, the person has changed. You know, um, mm-hmm. they're like I feel like they've read more or whatever. But they're like, oh my god, that kid, blah blah blah. And I was just like. I was so angry that I started crying. And the thing is with me, when I get frustrated and I cry with situations like that, it's not because I'm sad. It's I'm crying because I don't want to go to jail. Right. I don't right. want to have a cops called on me because I do something to put myself in danger because at the end of the day, I'm all my kid has, you know? Oh, right, right. So they, I lovingly checked this person and mm-hmm. I told them about themselves and you know that uh, that was the end of that, but it, it's it's you know stepping in to defend this person, it, it, and and I find myself doing this for like random people in the street. There was a kid, uh, there was a man with autism on the train. He was in, um, I think he was like going to Columbia University because I remember seeing his badge, and um, there was a group of kids like making fun of him. And when he got off that train, I told them about themselves and a little bit more. I was like, first of all, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I like read them to filth and they were so embarrassed. I was like, that is not how you treat people that are different than you. You need to be more considerate of their experiences. And the fact that you're making fun of them and they might not take it like that, because if you think about your sister and my son, like they're innocent. They, they're they're yeah, not they taking it like, oh, you're being sarcastic or you're making fun of right, me right. and you're being a jerk, you know, let me get away from you. It's, right. You know, they're going to stay there. Right. Right. And take, and take it. it. And, and go ahead. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a, a lot. lot. I see, I see your, your face, face and like, and it's, like a it's a lot. lot. It's, it's a lot. lot. Cause, Cause I've, I've done, done that, that too. too. I've, I've done, done like, like even, even when, when I, started I started going into like mid, like elementary school, middle school and you know, the yellow bus. 
you know, like the hype. Like if you're not from New York, if you're listening and you're not from New York, um, in New York, you have public transportation where children can take public transportation to go to school. And automatically, if you were seen on a yellow bus or a white bus, if it was a bus, you were automatically considered some type of, you were looked at differently because you can't get yourself to school. And automatically it was assumed you were of special needs. And nine times out of 10, if you look into the bus, there was a special, it was special needs kids. And I remember like stopping people from like trying to like throw things at a bus, like a passing bus with like an ill child inside. And I'm like, seriously, like, and I've, I've cursed people out for it. Like, I'm not as nice as you, Marcy. You're a better person than I am, probably guaranteed. Nine times out of ten, sis. Nine times out of ten. I'm, 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 because I ain't shit. And I admit that all day, every day. But I, the thing is, one thing about me is, is that I'm very honest and things, I'm very transparent. And the way things come out, they come out as, you know, how they're in my head. Yeah. And I've, 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 I've done, done a lot, lot of growing. I've learned how to filter a tad bit. You know, I use filters on IG on my face, not on not my, on my mouth, mouth, but, but I, mean, I mean, I'm working, working on it. And it's something that I do recognize because I, I sometimes have, I sometimes need a chill button because I'll just, I'll say, just say what, what I need, I to, need say. to say. And yeah. sometimes, sometimes not everybody's I... receptive to what you're saying. And that's come with the territory of my sister as well. And, you know, just, you know, telling, like, you know, thinking of that, thinking of, what if I get into an altercation and I lose my freedom for killing somebody because I blacked out? Yeah. Who will, Who my, will mom my mom and my sister, and my sister have? Sister. And this is what kind of turned me away also from the street, like the street, like being a street person. Yeah. Um, um, and not, you know, just being out there was not something that was appealing to me because I felt that it would put me in jeopardy of no longer being able to provide for my mother and my sister, then how, then how do, do how, how, what will happen, what will happen to, them? to them? And that's real. You know, you know like, like, it's if... like, really, like, what will happen to them? Have I had my streets fight? Sure. When I was a child, now as an adult, I really have to, I really have to ask myself, do I care enough to even give you that type of energy? Because if I do give you that energy, it's not going to be, it's not the energy you think I'm, a, like, it's really on some real staticky shit and it's about to get retarded. You understand, you understand what, what I'm saying? saying? Like, like it's, it's just, just like, like, and that's and the thing, like having, so one thing I did learn about myself, having my sister being the way she is, I don't, I, I don't, I don't have patience. I don't, she taught me that, but I don't have it. It is non-existent. And I have a really, really, really bad temper. Like I have, okay, no, it's not a temper. I'm not going to call it a temper. It's low tolerance for bullshit. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? saying? Like, like, it's just certain things don't fly with me. Certain remarks, certain, it's just, no. So I'd rather rather not, not, like, it's, 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 I'd rather, rather, it's either either I'm going to be around you or I'm not going to be around you at all. I'm not going to kind of be around you, but you are a shitty person. I can't do that. Because as a shitty person, then me naturally as an empath and I'm going to become a shitty person, then I'm going to have to tell you. Then it just, it escalates. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it just, it escalates. escalates. And it's just, just, no. no. Absolutely, no. So I've learned how to, you know, select the people who I'm around, select who I want around me, select who I allow, who I let my, you know, people into my sister's lives. Because not everybody's vibes are good vibes. Yes. You know, and that I, I'm, I'm a true believer in that. I've had, there's this one lady that would come to my house and every time she comes to my house, she means well, but I don't know what thing, thing she has on her that she comes to my house. And the moment she comes to my house, my sister, it's like moments later, my sister's catching a seizure. And I don't know what it, what it is. is. I don't know, I don't what, know triggers what triggers it. it. I don't, I don't know. Si know, si know. Yo no sé lo que es, Marcy. Yo no sé lo que es. Pero it's every time this lady comes into my house, my sister catches a seizure. Mm-mm. Yeah, I need to start saging when she gets, when she leaves. No, no it's guys to point out I don't open the door. I don't open the door. My mom opens the door, that's on her, but I'm not opening the door because I know who it is. 
you know, so that that's the thing. Like, there's just there's just certain things I don't want around her. I don't want around my sister. And, you know, that goes also in 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 reference to men, my dating, my dating life, life. life, introducing that part of my life to a man, understanding this is I don't have kids, but this is my package, though. I do I come, do with, come a with a package. package. And it's either you accept it or you don't. You know, you know it, it, it's it so comes down, down to that, to that too. too. Because it, that's that's also di- like a lot of people don't realize it's also difficult. And I've had people tell me like, you know that she's not your responsibility. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, well, she's your mom's child. She's not your child. I'm like, I'm yeah, like, yeah, but, yeah I'm but I'm her guardian. guardian. Mm-hmm. So, technically, so technically, God forbid something happens to my mother, who's stuck with her? You think I'm going to institutionalize her? Is that, Is what's, that what's next, next for, her? for her? No. And a lot of people don't realize that. I was like, well, you can. I'm like, why would I? When, I, when I'm perfectly well and capable of taking care of my sister. Yeah. And I can, and I can still, still live, live a perfectly, perfectly normal, normal life, life with my, my sister, sister being, being there, there to live to... a normal life with me. Why would, Why I, do would I do that? Because yeah. that's, that's the first... The first I, feel I feel like, like when it comes to special needs anybody, I feel like the first thing is they look at institutions or they look how to rid of them. And it's like, I think about my, like, I've thought about it. Like, I've thought about what would my sister do in an institution? Like, who would she, who would she tell that something hurts her? Or what if a a freaking, a male nurse or something or a male staff member sees her and my sister has a body on her. And those are the, those are the kind of, those are the kind of individuals that get the the most most rape, rape, that get the the most, most, you know, know, like, like. no. no, like I can't. Th- like I, I would really kill somebody if somebody was to touch my sister inappropriately. Like that. Like that. Oh man! And these, and are, these things are things that, that we that have we... to think about and prepare ourselves for because it can happen. It can happen in a school. It can happen in a day program. It can happen in anywhere. It can happen in a hospital if she's admitted and you happen you can't stay and you gotta go and you you understand like the, it can happen. But you but have, you to, have be to be prepared, prepared for, things for things like, like that. that. And you, and have, you have to, to like, like kind of really, really weigh out, weigh out your, options. your options. What are your options? Like if, if, if something is, you know, my sister can walk, my sister talks, my sister, you, you understand what I'm saying? This is not something where we're like turning and positioning and we have to change diapers. And even if then, if that that's what we have to do, then we got to do it. You know, we may need help, but it's going to have to get done. So. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't I probably, probably went off topic. topic and no, it's fine. When it, when it, when it comes, comes to... S- girl. Wait, could, Nemo, can we take one pause? Don't go anywhere. No, I'm no, not I'm going, not going anywhere. anywhere. I'll be right back. Sorry, I'm back. So, yo te cocinando. Oh, no, que me la ro. You know what I was just telling my mom that my mom was making, I don't know what. Que tu hiciste? She said queso, queso frito, frito and something, something else. else. And, I'm, and, and all I hear, shh, and, and I'm like, I Dios mío, this freaking recording. Hey, everybody, well, well, at least you, well, know, at least we're you know we're not starving. Not starving. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're not starving. <laughs> so, pero, excuse the background noise. This is a regular household. So going back, going back to, you touched on an important point. Like, I sent Aiden to these overnight camps, and the first thing that I thought about is like, you know, because Aiden's a good looking kid, you know, people like him and he's sweet and, you know, he doesn't necessarily tell me if something happens. So I am hyper vigilant to the point that the day camp is in like South Jersey. I took a one and a half hour trip to go see what the heck is out there and the sleeping arrangements and who's he going to be with. Like, not only do I worry about things like that, like assault, but I also worry about Who's going to be supervising him? Because I know I'm on him like white on rice. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. And my house is structured to the point that he's not in danger if he's right. Right. hanging out in his room or in the kitchen or wherever. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I needed to calm my anxiety down and, like, make sure that he was going to be okay. And and then you talked about another another point that you made is, you know, I'm a package deal. Like, I... If I'm with somebody, I need to make sure that that person is going to be taking receptive. It, yeah, receptive and, and taking and sensitive to the fact that right, my right. child has needs that other children don't have. Right. You right. know, and even though he is independent and, you know, he's getting there, it's, 
it's just, como te digo, it, it, it's just the way that, the way that they treat your child has a lot. Like, I, I observe that a lot. So I, I do, too. too. I, observe I observe how, how anybody, anybody talks, talks to my sister. sister. Yes. Like, how like, are you, are you speaking, speaking to her? To her? Like, like, what, what, what is, is it that you're saying, saying to her? her? And when, and when you, you are, are around, around, do you, do you acknowledge, acknowledge that she's that around? around? Or do you, you just act like, like mm. Mm. oh, hey. You know, like, what what is it? Because that says a lot about you. And God, the thing is, is that not... Things like, like I mentioned in the beginning of this segment, my sister was born a regular child. Who would think that their child at one and a half years old, a baby, a newborn, anything after they come out, everything is fine, 10 toes, 10 fingers, that they're going to, you know, have something as severe as meningitis and have it completely turn their their life upside down. So my thing is, if, God forbid, we have children, then what? That's That's been another fear of mine. I'm 30 years old. I have no children. children. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of points as to why I don't have kids. Um, one, because my responsibility to my sister and my mom. Also, you know... I don't, it's just us three, you know, I'm not going to tell my mom, Hey, you know, I got to go to work and you watch the baby for me. You know, my, my child won't have an actual aunt. So I can't be like, Hey, Hey, mm -hmm. you you go go take care of your niece and nephew. No, you know, you know, and then then I think of the scare of God forbid something happens to my kid. And now we have two babies and we're repeating history or now I'm a single mother. What do I do? I saw my, I saw mom, my mom go through, through it. it. Wow. Yeah. And, and I saw how much she went through. You know, how it affected her. My mother literally, she stopped being a woman to be a mother. And, and mm-hmm. in, the, in last the last 30 years, my mom has not had a man. You understand what I'm saying? Like, she hasn't brought a man to this house like, hey, this is my boyfriend. This is my soon-to-be husband. No. Because what she did was she made it her priority that she was going to be a mother. And she was going to protect her two girls till her last breath. You know? And she made sure of that. And she she made made sure sure that that we were never in danger. danger, That we were were never never in any any situation where we could have been harmed. Where there was never a situation that somebody could have taken advantage of us. Like, it was no, no. Mom, can I stay? No. That's a real thing. You guys see it as a meme, but it's a real thing. Mom, can I sleep over my friends? No. Why? Why? Because ello hay hombre ahí y uno nunca sabe. It's true. You know what I'm saying? She didn't even want me going to people's houses. Like, I'm like, mom, can I just... No. Tell them to come over here. Mm-hmm. You got you the got Barbie, Barbie dollhouse. You got the little car. You got all of that. Tell them to come over here. No. No. Wait, my mom used to say something. Uno no sabe lo que, que baila se mueble en casa ajena. Exacto. Exacto. Yeah. Like, my mom used to say... My mom still says my refrains, pero she was like, bueno. Le gozo que te toquen una vaina. Ay, no, 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 no. No. Tú no vas para allá. No. And it was just... That's it. No. You know, no. so, yeah. so I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I'm scared to have kids after I am scared to have children. I am scared. I, I will admit you hear it. You're hearing it here first. first. I'm, <laughs> I'm scared, scared to, have to have kids. kids. I am petrified to have a child or children for many reasons, but I'm, I'd be scared. I'd be scared to. I, I'm scared. I would be scared to, I like, I don't like, okay, I know I'm strong. I'm very independent, very outspoken. I'm very me, but I don't know if I have the same kind of strength to go through what my mom went through. My mom is a G like my mom, the way I look at my mother, like I, que tu necesita, que tu quiere, que te, I give, I her, give the her the world, world bro, bro, because, because yo, yo, she, she went, went through, through it, but she got it done. done. She, her head is still held high, her dignity intact, intact, and can't, and can't nobody, nobody point, point at, at her, her and say, that lady anything. That, that lady's, lady's not, not a hoe, that lady's not, not this, not, 
you know, I'm just saying, like, no, no course, offense, no offense to, no, to no who's on here, whatever, girl. girl. But, but <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is not about, about that, that, but you but understand, you understand what, what I'm saying? saying. Like, they're, they're, not, they're not saying that. You understand what I'm saying? They're not saying, oh, that lady right there, she's scandalous, she's drunk, she this, she, she, they're not saying that. And, and she, she did, did that, that, like, battling, battling depression, her herself having her medical conditions, because my mom is a diabetic, she's been a diabetic since she was a child herself, you know, with heart problems. Like, I don't know if I have that type of strength. Mm-hmm. That's, that's petrifying that's, when you really think about it and you and put, you it, put into it into perspective. perspective. Yeah. Because anything, anything can happen, can happen, but you don't know. You would want to think, think that, that things are going to happen the way you want, you want them, them to, to but, but yeah. you know, I thought that by Christmas I'll be a millionaire. We have, we a, have few a few days, days left. Let's see what's up. You know, <laughs> you know like, like, but well, worst, you know, worst case scenario, I'm going to still be working for the man. Like, and that's just what it is. But with Bringing another child and bringing a human being into this world is petrifying to me. Yeah. I talked about this in the last episode and people always, are always like, they're like, Aiden's going to high school next year. So what are the plans? Are you having more children? And I'm just like, bro. bro. First of all, I was like mm, 24 when I got pregnant. I had him by the time I was 25 and I feel like the time that I was supposed to be wild, not wild, but I mean, I did, I, I had fun in my 20s, but mm-hmm. the time that I was supposed to be traveling and getting to know the world and all that stuff, I spent being a mother. Right. So right. I don't think I'm ready to start all over again, start changing diapers. And not only that, but then like, like you said, it's, it's petrifying. Like it is. it is. I was looking at the statistics when I was uh, pregnant and basically it said that the likelihood of me having another kid with autism is very high after the first wow, one wow. comes out with autism. So for me, that's that's scary. scary. That is scary. That, and it's, is, and it's, scary. there's nothing wrong. I, like I love my son. Do I want to do it all again with another child? That, that's to be seen, you know, and, and I, and I get you. And it, let me tell you, and you haven't even read that book. What to expect when you're expecting. If you want scary movies or scary something scary to read, read that. Because mm-hmm. it's like your kid's the size of a pea and this could go wrong and these things can happen. And it's like I just I might, not, might get not get pregnant. pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> I might not just, I get, just get pregnant. pregnant. Right, you know? No, I mean, but the thing is, you, you know, you gotta take take uh, both, you know, both both sides of the coin. So right, right. It, you might have a perfectly healthy kid. I mean, there's ways to find out, you know, it, you can do genetic studies and, and things like that to see if that's something that can happen. But yeah, like I, I, I totally agree with you. Right. Um, so I had a question. Okay. Okay. Has your, has, has your sister Isa, has Isa ever asked you about her disability or, she, she has, has like, but in, in a different, like questioning it. She, she has, has um, um, but it was so the way that happened, and I remember that very vividly because I cried <laughs> a lot, and I'm like, oh, I didn't think I'd have to explain this to her. But she, it was something along the lines. I remember she had came, she was, she came home. She was upset from school. A little girl was like bothering her and shit, like throwing shit at her. And, um, she, she kind of didn't know how to defend herself from the little little girl. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, finally the little girl started calling her like names and stuff. Crazy. You're retarded. Oh my God. And um, she came home and she like, you know, and I'm like, what's wrong? We're like trying to figure it out. And I call her. She was in her room. She was in the room and she was sitting in her bed and she was crying. And I'm like, why are you crying? And she's like, well, somebody told me today that I'm ugly and that I'm retarded and that I'm crazy. Is that true? Is that true? Like, like and, and I'm, I'm just like. Just like- where is this little bitch so I can off her head? Because it's like, wow, you know, yeah. like, and I'm like, no, you're fine. And you know, and I feel like she doesn't, 
understand her condition. She knows that she has to take meds. She knows that she gets seizures. She does. She doesn't call them seizures. She calls them, you know, I got sick. Mm-hmm. You know, but she doesn't understand. Like she, so typically a, a regular individual that suffers from epilepsy, I've noticed that they they can they can see when an aura is coming in and they're about to get it. it so mm-hmm. my sister, my sister- is like she can't tell. Mm-hmm. You just have to really like watch her. And I can tell now, like I can tell when she's like at the verge or very close to one, like we, she's fragile. And I'm like, okay, mom, like, tenemos que tener cuatro ojos because she, her eyes are low. She looks a little disoriented and stuff. She's very like low animal. And, you know, she doesn't want to eat something or she's, you know, she's talking a little slurred. I already know there's something going on mm-hmm. and it's it's either coming or eventually it's gonna get it's you know the the seizure happens and bang um and um so i'm sorry it's the water, the water. i can't, I can't ha- it's, it's just a lot, a lot of a lot, lot going lot on right now um so so yeah so th- you know it's it's never been a real like discussion discussion as like why am i like this but, but you, know, you know, there, there has been times that she has asked me, like, "Am I crazy? Am, am I stupid? stupid? Am I retar- am I retar- like, because, like, because she's she had, had like, like, you know." Yeah. And now she's she's someone she stays home full time. Um, we had a situation a few years ago where she was in an adult day program, um, and, and they, they they failed to let us know that they were having um budget cuts, and they didn't tell us. us? That, that um, um, they didn't tell us that they cut down on paraprofessionals. My sister, my sister went, went to, the, to bathroom the bathroom by herself, I... and as she went to the bathroom, she caught a seizure and she hit her head in the stall. Oh my god! Then they sent her to a hospital that they weren't supposed. It was like a mess. But after that, it was just like after that, that affected her crazy because she we ended up she ended up catching like two strokes after that. It was just like it was like we were going through a battle with her neurologist, with everybody, with everybody. With everybody. Like, the, like first the first thing people are thinking, thinking about, like, about, oh, why haven't you sued? Because money's, money's not gonna, gonna bring, bring my, my money's, money's not, not gonna, gonna bring, bring my sister, sister to, to being a regular adult. You understand what I'm saying? Like money is not gonna do that for her. It's just it's not. Just not. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not. You understand what I'm saying? Like, sure, having money is cool and all, but like that. Like my mom always says, "Eso es dinero salado." Like, no, we're just trying to get her better. We need the right doctors. Like, we need to go to her insurance covers it. Then we're going. Let's go. She needs to see the right the the the, the right neurologist. This, I don't like what you're saying. This makes no sense because two plus two always equals four. You know, you know, and it's just it's we've been through a lot when it comes to like it because I think her biggest issue has been her epilepsy. And not so much her mental impairment. Because I feel with her mental impairment, along the line, she would have been able to learn and build on what she knows. Because of the epilepsy and the reoccurrency of it, it messes with um, a part of her brain where it retains short-term memory. Mm. So she, So if she met you today, and let's say she sees you, in a week and a half, which is not a really long time. Nice to meet you. But Isa, I met you already. Oh yeah. Okay. You ask her, "Hey, what's my name?" Um, tell me. I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> you know, like she'll get herself out of it. She's like, "Yeah, you ain't gonna put me on the spot." But you know, it's affected her short-term memory. She can't, she can't retain. retain. She lives her life by routine. And, you know, she she has her routine. She has a very very strict strict regimen throughout the day that she needs to do. And if she doesn't do it, it kind of, like, throws her off. But it's like, this is how she lives. But it's the the epilepsy epilepsy that has been, like, the biggest struggle. So it doesn't allow her. I feel like cognitively, it doesn't allow her to go further. Yeah. You know? know? So So that's why I've never gotten the real question of, like, what is this? Why am I like this? 
because, because I, think I think if she didn't have the epilepsy or if at one point the epilepsy would have been either like handled or like cured, there could have been a possibility that cognitively she would have gotten a little more ahead and that question would have been a follow-up. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my friends actually asked me if Aiden knows that he has autism and we haven't actually had the conversation mm-hmm. like directly. He's never really asked me. I mean, he's mm-hmm. always been in a special school and has always taken the bus, but I don't know if he's aware that he's different than everybody, you know, that he knows like the typically developing because I feel like right, everybody right. has some. Everybody has something, honestly. If right, we're, right. If we're gonna, if we're gonna be real, everybody has something. But like, he's not like the typically developing kids, you know. Right, but, right. Um, yeah, like we haven't had the conversation. I, I don't know. You know, it actually makes me want to ask him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, what's the, what's point? the point? Kind of. Kind of. I don't know. Like maybe what's is the it point necessary? Of what? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Not that I'm trying to hide that he has a disability from himself. I I feel like he knows that he's different and that he's special and he's okay with that. Like mm-hmm. it hasn't gotten to the point that somebody's like, "Oh, what's wrong with you?" or something. Like right. That. right. I mean, besides me, like I think. I mean, I think in the situation, like you know. Right. Like, I think, I think eventually, eventually he'll, he'll probably, probably learn. learn. He'll, be, he'll able be able to learn, to learn what, what he does, does have, have if somebody wants to ask him, hey, hey, you know. You know. Like, well, no, I'm autistic. Ain't nothing here to watch. Just an autistic guy walking by, you know. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't. Honestly, I honestly don't think that's a conversation you would need to have with yeah. him because I, I feel like, like, okay, you take him to a special needs school, but does he? It's a school. He knows kids go to school. So to him, he's just just in school. school. Mm -hmm. He rides the bus to go to school. Kids ride the bus to go to school. That's what kids do when they're going to school. They get on the bus and they... You you get what I'm saying? So he will correlate still. He would probably still, within his mind, he will still try to correlate. Like, there's there's normalcy to that. Like, it's normal. normal. He sees it on TV. TV. He sees it... The school, the special school that he's at is actually inside of of a... a regular school, like a regular district school. So okay, it's like okay. his school is like in the, like on the second floor and then he's in a regular junior high school. So he sees other, other kids. I don't know if they have integrated gym, but the goal of the school is for them to be with kids that are typically developing to be able to encourage independence. And that's so the, the typically developing kids can be a model for them. Right, so right. they're really they're really good about cracking down on bullying and things like that. So, you know, I've been to the school several times and I'm like, I love it. Like he's really I feel like he's progressed more there than he did when he was in elementary school. Right. It was right. kind of more. It was more. Like very like they were in in another school, but I feel like they were like more separate. Segregated. That makes sense. Probably probably segregated from like the. Nor like what they would the I don't I, don't, I, I hate, I hate using like, like yeah, yeah typical, typical thank, thank you, you. like the typical, typical kids it's yeah I, I see what you're saying. that was like my sister's high school my sister's high school I think she went to is is 129 or something like that but they they had a very um high percentage or 720 I don't remember the damn name of the school but the school she went to, her high school was like her middle, her junior high school was just like that, where they had like a regular ed and then they had, you know, the special ed. But I felt that the way, because of where in the Bronx it was located and the kind of kids that were going to the school, mm-hmm. it wasn't appropriate. Yeah. It was, it was too, I felt like it was way too aggressive. Like a too, um, a way to like an aggressive approach to that. You get what yeah, I mean? Like, like it was it just, was just, you know, these are kids that are nine times out of ten coming out of a home that low poverty. They're angry already. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's living situations. So to come to a school and see somebody that doesn't look like them, or you know, that's an easy target. Like it was like, just it was, it was, it was too, too much. much. 
So her high school was completely different. It was, it was, they kind of tried to integrate, like they, they had like a, a very small portion of like um, typically developed kids. kids. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of the school was mostly them, but they would still do things that would allow them like to teach them how to um, integrate with, with you know, you know, human civilization, civilization. Right. right? And, yeah. and yeah. you know, survival skills and things like that. It's like it was a, it was good for what it's worth. She was there, she was there until, until she was about she was twenty-one because they cause keep they the, the kids there up until about twenty-one, and then she graduated, and then she went to the adult day program. Yeah. Mm. And, she and she was she in was the adult, adult day program, program maybe for like two years, and that second year, that's when everything everything happened. But like, that's another thing. Like, I know that they want because they get money. You know, yeah, there's yeah, a do. budget in the mm-hmm. in the government for you know special education programs. The schools get money, mm-hmm. so I get that you don't want to lose the kids, but also, to what degree are you keeping these children or these people? Not even children. We're talking about grown ups. Like, yeah, you know, how are you keeping them safe? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, like, th- this is the problem that I have. Like everything is so politicized that people are willing to sacrifice the safety of other people for a dollar. You right. Know what right. I'm saying? So that, right. that, that drives me nuts. Cause not my kid. Right. right. And that's and what that- we said. And even like the home care agency, when they were evaluating her, and we were trying to get like an increase of hours because at this point now we're like, we're not sending her back. I don't know what you thought this was, but we're not sending her back. After that nonsense, yeah, we're not sending her back. Are you dumb? Are you dumb? So a nurse came in, did an evaluation, an assessment, and pretty much following up on her needs. And I'm like, yeah, but why isn't she in a adult day program? And I'm like, listen, sis, we put her in the smallest adult day program because there wasn't that many like the population there it was a small institution and you know it's not that many um adults there young adults there older adults there. like there's not that many of them there so it's a controlled and they still messed up so no my sister like having two strokes is not enough for you for her to like that's not enough you know so it was just it, they were really forcing like well instead of her getting home care she could probably be in this adult day program and then come out and then get her home care i'm like yeah that no that's not happening she's not going she's not going unsupervised and the thing is is that as she got as she progressed in age her epilepsy progressed mm. and, and has, has you know got more aggressive and you know it, it it's something that we still continue to battle you know, you know, we just, we just recently, recently, like back in May of this year, she was hospitalized for like two weeks and a half Aww. and it was, and it was changing, changing medication. medication. Her. So before she did that, before she went, she was um admitted. We were trying to, she was on a cocktail of medications to help suppress her epilepsy because they were so reoccurring. And um, she was on a schedule, 5.30 a.m. That's when her day started. 5.30, 7, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., 12, 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 9 p.m., 11 p.m. At 11, at 11 p.m., p.m. After, after she, she took that final dose of medication, she was able to go to sleep. So just wake up again. And me and my mom will split up the, since I'm the one getting up early for work, I'll give her the morning meds. Before, before going, going to work, work, you give her the night meds. And the in between in the day because you're here with her, you know. So it was, you know, now she's down to twice a day, which is, which great. is great, and it has, and it been, has helping, been helping. But, but like, you know, it's always something. It's always something. The way young Miami, it's always something. Something. It's always, it's always something. something. It is always something with her. So it's, you know, it's it's a constant battle, and a lot of people don't understand. My girl needs supervision. Vision. Like you like have you to have literally, literally just, just stare, stare at, her. at her because you don't know. You know how you know how, you know how many, many times, times that she has sat here. Like I'm sitting where I'm sitting. This is where I've been working from home, and I sit here, and she sat sits right next to me, literally six feet. 
in her chair eating something. She catches something, and I don't catch. Like if I don't turn my head, she's falling on her face oh off a chair. a chair. And a lot of people don't realize that. They're like, yeah, but it's like humanly impossible for you to like stare at somebody. Like, no, it's not. It's just you have, to, bro. Like she needs to be supervised. Mm-hmm. Even, Even sitting down is dangerous for her. Mm-hmm. You, know? you know, so, so a, lot a lot of people don't understand, understand that. that. I know. So, so it's a lot. It is. Um, but you guys are both lucky to have each other, like we said before. Um, but I want to know more about Isa. Tell me what yes, makes yes. her sparkle. Like I know she's a little sassy little thing. She's, she's so very, very tell sassy. me more about her. Like what is like she, what are, what kind of things is she into? You know, she loves, loves music. music. She, loves she loves to dance. dance. So, so her, her man, man is Romeo. Santos, like her, like her Romeo, Romeo, like put bachata on, and it's she, and if it's a Friday, she's gonna say Oi se baby, like she's that, <laughs> that person, person. Like, like and <laughs> my sister, like she loves it. She ella le gusta la bulla, le gusta. She loves people over. She loves like the el can. She loves it, and she'll be like, hey, 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 like she's the life of the party. She's the life. She likes, she likes, she likes her, nails her nails painted. painted. She, likes she likes to be. She wants to smell good. good. She, oh, likes, she likes her perfume. perfume. She's like really, yeah, yeah. She's, she's very, very girly. girly. Ooh. Very, very, very girly. Very girly. She's like, oh, you like my hair? They just did it. And if they put in a doobie, she's like, oh, you like my little hat? And it'll and be, it'll her, be her, bonnet. her bonnet. She's like, <laughs> you like, like my little, little hat? hat? It looks nice, right? It's new. Mommy got it for me. And I'm like, oh yeah. She's like, yeah. Like, like she's real like. Real, Real sassy. sassy. No, it's my favorite was for her birthday because let me tell you, yeah, yes. Miss Isa did not come to play. No, no she, did she, did she did not. She did oh, not. Oh, and the hair. Everything. Everything. I was like, okay, girl. You gotta take her out. You gotta put her to her. That's the reason I'm gonna watch. All of her rings. Like, like, she gotta be color coordinated. Like, she be ready. She, she, she's something else. She loves, loves it. Like, I she, love she it. Loves, loves she has that. such a big personality. I, I, she I does. love watching her. Like she's so funny. And then singing with you and like yes. being yes. so affectionate. It just like really like it warms my heart. I love seeing her. Um yes, yes. so Nemo, I know you take care of her and you work a lot. Yes, like yes. you're always working. Mm-hmm. But what do you do for yourself? to take care of yourself so that you can be able to pour into Isa and your mom. What do you do for self-care? Um, <laughs> um, um lately, lately, <laughs> lately I haven't really been doing much, but, um, mm, um, that's the thing. They, they, it's like being here with them is a type of self-care. I go out, I do my, Every once in a while, a little trip, a little weekend away or something to kind of reset, regroup, revise, revisit. Um, But there's nothing more tranquil than my house. Like, even with my sister being in the condition that she's in, and it's there's peace in my house. My house house is very very peaceful. Like anybody that comes to my house is like, yo, there's mad peace in here. Like, yes. And that's what we live by. By, Like like, literally, literally, right. right. Like Like, we're we're very very peaceful. We know how to respect each other's boundaries. Like my mom knows when I just want to chill and like lay back and watch a show or something. She'll be there on her tablet. My sister will be there chilling. Um, Now put some music on. She'll sit there. She's like, yeah, I like that song. And like, you know, it, like she's, you know, you if know, she if hears, she an, hears artist, an artist, I like, she's like, like oh, look, look, that's Jenny's man. <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, so that that's the thing. Like, that they are my self care. Like, they are my like they they they're they're all of that for me. You know, I feel like sometimes when I feel like sometimes when I'm away, I feel a little selfish. Um, I feel like. I don't know, like I like I need to be there, which is not healthy. You know, it's not healthy to be like that. You can't guilt trip yourself um, for life, you know, for life happening and you being a part of life because it's there. Because I I feel that um, I don't want to say eventually, because I want to think that 
if there were to come a time that I do become so care provider of my sister that my life is not just going to stop, stop. Mm -hmm. it won't be as socially active, but I feel that I could still keep some type of normalcy to my life, even though, you know, so I don't know. I just... I don't, I don't do much, do much, girl. I just, girl. I just freaking, freaking work. work. I, 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 need need to to stop. Stop. Probably I need to stop, stop working. Like, 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 I need to work, work less, less or, something. or something. If there's, if there's, there's a sugar, sugar daddy, daddy listening, listening to this podcast, podcast please, please, please holler at me. At me. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll give you no sugar. I'll make you a cheesecake, though. I'll make you a cheesecake, though, if you want some sugar. This should give you diabetes. Right. Right. Just put me in your will. You know? Wait, I want to say that your six line dulce is like your baking is amazing Thank guys you. i got a flancocho from her last year and my family literally devoured it i was getting feeling a certain kind of way because somebody ate more than they were supposed to so i was about oh, to go ham <laughs> on that person but yes yeah, she has a very accomplished line of baking goods she makes delicious desserts um and with that nemo i won't call you jenny because you're gonna mess me up um thank, thank you <laughs> tell me, tell me. with that we're gonna end the episode thank you so much for being so candid and so open nemo thank you um comadres remember follow me at comadre on the pod and follow nemo on ig at the curl, the curl plug, plug girl. Girl. Yeah. well no well, the no, curl, the curl plug. plug just the just curl, curl plug. plug not the, not curl, the curl, curl plug girl, girl just the just curl, curl plug, plug. Okay. sorry and <laughs> make that clear <laughs> And if you have any questions at all, remember, you guys can always send me a comadre gram. If you want Nemo back, let me know. Yeah. Um, my email is comadreando at escthenetwork.com. Or you could just send me a DM. Slide up into my DMs. Um, and thank you for spending the evening with your comadres. Thank yeah. you, Nemo. No, no thank, thank you. you. Oh, my baby. Baby. I appreciate you so much for this. Right. Thank you guys for listening. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, don't hang up. Okay. Okay. <laughs>